Oh, okay, I'm Sovereign Sage, and we're gonna re get ready to finish up this quest that's taken me forever to do. It's taken me longer because I've gotten locked out of it three times because of Nilo's um, story quest has screwed it up for me. So we're gonna be finishing uh, this. So all of the dust has settled, you've, you've still got some questions. Nahida, who is in the Sanctuary of Saristana, will answer them for you. So she like took over our body to talk to everybody. Um, and then we came back to talk to her. Okay. Woo! Nahida! Hello. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. What a fantastic night. I'm still immersed in all the happiness and joy, like a candle floating on water. So are we. And that's why we're here to talk with you. Is there anything you want to know? A lot, actually. So what I said in the end of my last video, that a lot of movies and games do that, where they just skip out on whole shit. Like, after we defeated Scar and he fell out of the Gundam mecha, whatever you want to call it, what happened to him exactly? That's like all I care about and all I've been caring about. I haven't cared about anything else except for what happened to him and like nobody's fucking telling me. Um, but he does, he is going to become playable in the next update, version 3.3. And he's an animo type, and I'm trying to understand where and how he got that vision. I mean, yeah, being animo in this game. The animo has a strong symbolization in this game, and it symbolizes freedom, because Venti is the god of freedom. But if you have wind as your element, you're symbolized as being somebody free. Um, and I'm curious as to... I mean, the gods themselves don't bestow those elements on people. You get your element based on what you do. But I'm curious as to why he got that. Do you know what happened to him? He's still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. Oh, when he fell, he did hit fucking hard. So she stole the electronosis from him, and then he, like, fell and hit the ground. So I guess it knocked him into a coma when he impacted. He hit really hard, too. He fell from quite a distance. I know you have many misgivings about him. But as someone who had become a god, he has retained a number of very useful features. Oh? Like what? Well, I already know, because I I uploaded that, uh, what you would call leak preview footage um, of how he plays. He can levitate off the ground and fly through the air. He, but his stamina meter is a different color. It's like a turquoise green, kind of like the color that's in here. Um, when you play as him, you can actually lift off the ground and levitate up quite a distance. Like, he goes up like he flies. If you hold the button down, um, he can actually go up. I think he's going to be a very useful character because say if you're like trying to climb something and you can't get up there, if you, if you use his levitating ability, you can just get up to anything. And I like that. That's pretty cool. I think he's going to be a very useful character to me if I get him, which I really hope and wish I do, but that's up to chance. Um, so he flies around, he can hover, he can, he can, uh, like he can just fly. Not all the time though. Um, he just has like this hover ability where he can levitate and he can also fly through the air um, Kind of like Cyborg Neza does in Warrior 2 3 Ultimate. He has like that fly hover But his is much faster and it doesn't last very long You can only do it for a couple seconds at a time and then when he fights he throws like wind slashes with his hands and his his elemental burst is absurd he does like this giant foot stomp with a like a ball of wind, almost like the Rasengan, but he sto he steps on it and it goes into the ground and shoots a bunch of things up, so it's like really absurd. Like he, sh he stomps on the ground with the wind ball, and the when the ball hits the ground, it like shoots up through the ground. Kind of like the way, um, Shokai, um, Zhang Wei, uh, from Dynasty Warriors, the way his, uh, Muso, his default Muso on the ground, how he, how the swords come up through the ground. Um, it's kind of like that. But not really. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do any evil. I wonder how the Electro Archon's gonna feel about that, because she already said she doesn't have any plans on relinquishing control over him. Like she doesn't have plans on letting him go. In addition, there are still some mysteries left in him. Some things may be very clear from my perspective. But he is still yet to understand them himself. His future will be determined by fate. 
That's not at all what it says. His future will be deter depend on his luck. Oh my god. Um... Belfontaine, this is the next stop on my journey. Oh god damn it. Um... Isn't that the Hydro Gods area? Anyway, uh... About what happened after I fell asleep that day. You mean... What happened after the doctor put you to sleep? Did he take that Gnosis? You gave it to him. Not exactly. The top ranked Fatui Harbingers, up to number three, possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate, the Heavenly Principles. In fact, the Heavenly Principles has been quiet since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. I used this point as leverage against the Doctor. I told him that the Heavenly Principles may be awakened if I destroyed Gnosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. I assumed that the Heavenly Principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take place. And as for what I exchanged for the Gnosis? The exchange served as both punishment for the Doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the God of Wisdom. Okay. After recent events, the Akasha can no longer function as it used to. I've given it some thought, and have decided to shut it down permanently. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. The Akasha centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. I don't think this is good for Sumeru. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, they will soon understand that this life is more suitable for them. And as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. The former sages have received their punishment, but the new sages have yet to be selected. I will oversee the process personally. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on academics. Sumira needs such leaders more than ever. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far too long. I've already taken some measures to address this. It will take some time to rebuild everything, but no matter if it's culture, friendship, or trust, we will rebuild it. Okay, then what about the... Is that where you're headed next? Fontaine, the Nation of Justice? As far as I know, that nation operates in a judicial system. Does their Archon personally judge people? No, there's a Chief Justice in Fontaine. Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Fosalor, won't preside over individual trials. So that's their name. However, even then, Fosalor will still make herself present at just about every trial. It seems that she just likes to immerse herself in that sort of atmosphere. So it's another female god, okay? As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got, uh, a very unique personality. Alright. Well, if Kusanali is gonna hold on to Skara and keep him safe, then I guess that's okay. It'll be revealed in the next update. I think that's why he has a whole feather motif. If you look at his new design, he has a feather that hangs from, like, his left shoulder. It symbolizes a whole lot. Like, that character is the massive face of symbolism. Holy shit. Not only does he have the whole feather thing, but his, his element is now changed to anima, which symbolizes freedom. So, holy fuck. He's also nicknamed the Wanderer. So if you ever hear people say that, they're talking about him. It's not said in in-game yet, but there's been leaks that when they say the Wanderer... Because Lumine is known as the Traveler, so if you hear the Wanderer, that's Skara. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Isn't there something else you haven't asked about yet? Uh... what? Huh? You mean about your brother? Ether? While you were resting at Gandarvaville, I took some time to perform an ermine soul search for information on your brother. But we both came from beyond the Sea of Stars. Yeah! Is that ermine soul a 
repository for all the information and memories up to that? So there shouldn't be anything on her or her brother. This is true in your case. Ermin Solon D does not have any information on you. However, there must be something different about her brother. Because, as it turns out, the world has recorded information on him after all. Well, they said that he wandered through the world for 500 years before I woken up, which is why he sided with Conria, because he was there during its destruction. What? Mm. There's only one possible explanation. He belongs to this world. Oh, fuck. Wait. How is that possible? We journeyed the Sea of Stars all our lives until we came here. How could he possibly hail from Tevat? Things don't add up. Is there something wrong with my memories? Or is this world that... Oh, I can't read. Or is it this world that has done something to him? Wait. First trip to Tibet? Do you know what he has been through? Hmm. According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, he began his journey through the seven nations of Tibet. But just as his journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Ermansol records on him suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean, fuzzy? Did something happen to him? All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating his fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that, who knows what else they're capable of. Could it be related to the Abyss? Yeah, because uh, the Unknown God, her real name is Asmodee. I believe she's the god of the Abyss. She's like a hidden god that nobody knows about, and she's the one who did it. But... Even that wouldn't explain how he somehow comes from this world! Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. Descenders? What's a Descender? Paimon's never heard of it! Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? A very important part of the intel was about this world's Descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Well, they actually had angel wings, and Gnosis, um, Ether and Lumin each have their own Gnosis that gives them powers. Mine's was taken, which I think when it was taken for Lumin, she must have fucking lost her memories, and they, they must have been rearranged by Asmodee, which is why when we woke up, we were on that shore. So it's like our, our whole journey has been really somebody else's, like, pulling the strings or like a fucking puppet. They've been constructing and controlling our whole journey the entire time. Because I read an article that said that Genshin Impact does have an ending, but the ending isn't what people are going to think it's going to be. That it's supposed to be, like, fucking super tragic. And watch it turn out that we're, like, fucking fake. And that our brother is never our real brother at all. Or something like that. Traveler, you are Tavat's fourth descender. Fourth? Huh? So the Fatui so killed three other descenders before the Traveler, traveler and her and brother isn't even, even one of them? them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. Huh. <sighs> hands about to burst from all this crazy new information. I don't like the way she's just staring at me blankly like that. And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the God of Wisdom. Well, so far what we know about Aether is that he wants to avenge Conria, because like we said, he was there when it was destroyed. He saw the world from a different perspective. Um, and, and he sided with the Abyss also. But the Abyss isn't part of Conria, or I think it actually might be their residence. The people of the nation of Conria turned into dark creatures, which is what the Abyss is, I guess. Um, but it doesn't make any sense, because there's the opening for, um, what is it, the Battle Pass or something, where Venti's narrating it, where he's like, one, one twin fell to darkness and believes that they are the, the princess or uh, prince of that, but they're actually aren't. 
they're corrupted by darkness to think that they are, but they ain't. Um, which explains why Ether thinks he's the prince of the abyss, but he isn't. Um, and our job is to free them from that, but that still doesn't make sense either because I have it reversed in my game. The true story is that Ether is the one looking for Lumine. But in my game, it's reversed, as is it as a lot of other people's, so it gets really confusing. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. Same here. I'll need some time to reflect on what you've said. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. I'm sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. Alright, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes, and maybe I'll appear in your dreams. What the fuck? All right. Hold on a minute. That still ain't enough for me to do the thing. So we can accept her story quest now. That's why my thing's light lighting up. Uh... Where is hers at? Right here? The dream of awakening. One day you and Paimon noticed that many people in Sumeru were talking about dreams. <gasps> Is there anything you want to know? No, now it's highlighted. What the hell? Hmm. According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, he began his journey through the seven nations of Tevat. But just as his same. journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Ermansal records on him suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean fuzzy? All I know for sure is that somebody and whoever it is, if they... But even that would make Something else I noticed was that according to... Okay, it's the same. I shouldn't have done this. I'm sure you're a very important traveler. You. Huh? So that's right. As for the other... <sighs> and yet, there are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time. And soon, you'll also begin... I'm very interested in you. If fate is the old... I'm unsure The pleasure is all mine. I just wanted to see if it was going to be different. I shouldn't have done that. I just wanted to see if it was going to be different. Fuck! Oh, nope, nope. Oh, I still don't have enough. Well, uh, the, the version 3.3 .3 I think is going to come out fairly quickly because this version came out within a month. Uh, literally, version 3.1 was not that long ago. Um, so... Well, I, if I, well, if I go finish another quest, um, the one that's out here, you know, today is Friday, and, you know, one thing I've been not doing in this game is you need to go out and fight all of the domains. You fight all the main, like, um, child and the giant wolf and the Electro Archon and Sonora and the Electro Oceanid, the main water Oceanid, like all of them. You're supposed to go out and fight them. They're considered domains. Well, actually the Oceanids are not. Um, but all main creatures outside world bosses, they regain their power at at the, at the beginning of every week, every Monday. So like the I think the Cryo and Pyro Regis finds, I don't know if you can count them, like they're outside bosses that you can just access. But when it comes to domain bosses though, like even um, Dvalin and stuff like that, like they, you can challenge them once a, once a week. The only one I fight the most is Child, because he's the only one that's fun for me. <laughs> yeah. 
impale myself on that. I like how I accepted it and it was like fucking fighting me. Yes, you can only do these once a week too. I have a bounty set. But I think it might have cancelled. You can do three. I do need to work on this. Right now, Sumeru has the lowest reputation, so I think I'm at seven in Leela. I think I'm about at seven in Monsta, and I think I'm about at least six or seven in Inazuma. Yeah, there's no, there was another quest I was trying to do out there, though. Over here. Because that quest has been active for a long time and I've never finished it because I'm always so busy doing other crap. <sighs> well, that is kind of interesting. If they're saying that the brother was from this world and we're twins, we're supposed to come from the same place. Watch it be that we're not really his real twin or like we are his twin, but we come from a different world. That kind of doesn't make sense either, though. I'm sure it'll be explained at some point. Yeah, I already read that before. I only have six, son of a bitch. Yeah, I have a quest out here that I was trying to do. Let me see if I can... Uh... It's this. I gotta go get water from that spring for him. Just the flame. Let me see if I can make something. Yeah, I really do need to finish this quest because I accepted it a long time ago and never fucking finished it. It's one of the longest fucking quests of my life, it really is. is really long though. Some of the world quests are like three to five hours. Some of them are like six hours long. That's why when I go to um, I go to accept world quests, I kind of dread it in a way because some of them are really long. When you go to accept it, you got to make sure you have time. If you don't got time, it's just like holy shit. I got to go get water from that spring for her. I think it's her. I can't even get around that, wow. <laughs> There's nothing else for me to do now that I finished that, but that is interesting, Nahida's hiding Skara. I wonder how the Electro Archon's gonna feel about that shit, because there's literally a line that she says where she's like, I'll never relinquish control over him. <laughs> Watch, I'll show you. Her voiceover. Uh, 
I admire her immunity. It is a sign of true power or wisdom, the power she holds. Pu'er is capable of doing many things beyond our wildest imaginations, and yet she uses her power only to right wrongs and to protect. She is truly gentle. Gun. Yeah, um, what she says about him right here. He came he about as a byproduct of creating the Shogun. The Shogun. <sighs> Perhaps, Perhaps it's because I feel like I owe him something, but I do not wish to assert control over him. Yeah, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> but he winds up becoming free and becoming his own person, you know? You can't control somebody forever. He's basically like her son, if you want to look at it that way. And the Raiden Shogun's like her daughter. And the Raiden Shogun and Skara are brother and sister, so that's fucking weird. I have, a fr I have a friend who posted a meme on, hi on his channel, and people were getting mad about it. It's funny, though. Basically, the meme that he posted is... It's, it's A talking to Skara, and she's like, I'm your mother, but my body is your sister. And he's like, so what? And she kind of looks down at him, and she gets like this look on her face, and she's like, doesn't that sound kind of like horny to you? Like... Basically, if he sleeps with her, it's like he's fucking his mother and his sister at the same time. Ha! <laughs> Which is true! Disturbingly so. My friend is into that type of shit, though. That's why he posted it. There's a lot of people getting mad. There's everybody- pe there's people saying, I need to bleach my eyes, and... It's a fucking meme. Just chill out. I think it's funny, but people got mad that he posted that. I thought it was fucking funny. Because there are people who look at these characters in a sexual manner. I've seen fucking hentai of all of these characters. Every single character in this game, I've seen fuck each other. So, that's why my friend posted that. Because he, he's been subjected to it, too. And it, it kind of sucks, man. But, it's like Rule 34. If it exists, there's prawn of it. And I said it like that for a reason. We're back! This is the best water in all the world. Terrific. I can make the best soup, so as long as I have the best water, not a sub, and we'll love it. Okay. You know, since the R&R are making food for us so eagerly during this happy occasion, we should return the favor. What do you say? Maybe they'll like some radish veggie soup. Let's show them what Nara cooking's all about. Nara is another word for human. I think I, I think I have some. And that's our piping hot radish veggie soup all ready to go. The Aranana should be done with their dishes too. Yeah, I do have it. Thank God. I made some the other day for another quest. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had any for this. Oh my God. You still have to ask Sovereign to help. Or you will end up cooking the same dishes as before. According to the improvement method from Paimon, Aranana finishes... The okay, yeah, I read it quickly in my mind, but I couldn't say it out loud. Under my guidance, they made their dishes correctly. Was well, a taste of the true blue gourmet Nara food, huh? Well, it was our Paki's suggestion for Nara Sovereign to teach my brothers. Nara dishes... Is this what Nara called the taste of happiness? Happiness is fleeting from me. But our Nara's water is obviously the best with water, so how did something like this get made from it? The unrivaled fresh fruit is still delicious, though. Huh? You are Nara think it's awful? Paimon thought it was perfectly yummy, though. I have no idea how awful it's supposed to taste, but the flavor of this dish has impact. You know, like the kind you get from running full speed into a tree. Ooh, ooh. Well, this has got to be a massive case of cultural clash. Oh, Paimon looks so... I mean, Lumi looks so defeated. Still, it's rude to say that, my brothers. You should be thanking her instead. Hmm, I'm sorry. Don't say sorry, say thank you. Yeah. But it's okay. As long as Nara, Sovereign, and Paimon enjoy the food, don't mind them. If our and our friends are happy, we're happy. That said, Nara, Sovereign is totally different from Nara, Varuna, who told us a lot of things about sisters. Nara, Sovereign is very quiet. Are you feeling on all? Uh, say something, Sovereign. <clears throat> Thanks for your concern. Is that so? I'm glad, once again. 
Yeah, thanks. These petals are from Arpaki and her brothers. They're for you. We hope the two of you will enjoy more of the taste of happiness here in Varana. Or Vana. Fuck. Vanarana. Okay. Yeah, I need to... I need to go find the one I need to talk to. Did it just undo it? Because I didn't accept it right away. Shit. The yeah, act with the main celebration hasn't started. Alright. Time to get nothing. Be funny if I got her, but that's asking too much. Woo! Oh, hi, Noel. They're like, do you want Noel? I don't know. She's alright. Yeah. I wonder if I should let it build again. They always do that to me. They give me every other character on the banner except for the main one. I've come to be used to that, actually. Honestly, I really have. Where the fuck is she? Go up, go up. Damn it. It will deal 400 attack damage of Geo to surrounding enemies when her breastplate is broken. My fucking god. No, seriously, what the fuck? I don't mean oh my fucking god as in are you kidding me? I mean oh my fucking god as in really? Was he gonna say something? Hmm? How was he talking, though? I'm in the pause menu. My game is freaking the fuck out. I only heard Hazel go, huh. It was almost as if though he was agreeing with what I was saying. What the fuck? <laughs> Hazel? What did you say? How did you say? How is he talking to me in that menu? My game's been doing that. Like, if I pull up a character like this, like this, right? And I highlight another one, their voice lines will play over each other. Like that. And then I go to him and it would still be playing. It's not doing it now. What the fuck? Oh my god. Also, why do his eyes look yellow here? When they're green? Look, his eyes are green. His eye color changes all the fucking time. Like, first it's green, then it's yellow, then it's like a white green. Like, look at it, it just keeps changing. Oh. Oh. Yeah, look at it. See, it's green here. And then when you go here, it's like, drastically- look, it's yellow. Hazo, you are a fucking mystery boy. Oh, what is that? He has those pupils that... So, like, if you stare at him, right? And stare at the pupil, it just looks like, um... It looks like its eyes are constantly following you. Do you see it? You see it? Like, oh, it just looks like he's constantly following you. Like, he's constantly staring at you without actually staring at you. Oh, my god. Uh. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Uh. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk to you. I was trying to do, do this. Damn it, I talked to her again. Did I get it? Or did it roll away? Oh, there it is. Okay. My oh, damn cabbage! Don't. <laughs> We need that fruit to save Rana. The main girl we've been trying to save. Golden Nara, perfect timing. My name is Sovereign, you know. Gold is a wonderful color, the same as sunshine. That's what I'd like to call you on this important occasion. Regardless, your name shall be recorded in our songs. Nara Sovereign is a good name, very lyrical. Oh, God. 
the girl whose eyes and soul are as golden as the sun. Thy name is Nara Severin. Hey, what about Paimon? Don't forget about Paimon now. The pearl and moonlight, pure as silver. Thy name is Paimon. Yes, Paimon wants to hear more. Maybe something that lauds our friendship to wait for more. Back to the topic. You're here. Everybody's having a great time at the festival. Yeah, I guess so. It's always nice to have somebody to help out and play with, right? Oh? I'll just... I'll... I'll indulge her for a moment. Yeah, sure! From the first cry after birth, this is the moment you've been preparing for. St stupid Ariasa, only baby Nara born in would cry. We're ready, and so is the ancient stage where it shall take place. Okay. I'm a bit nervous. Am I supposed to do something here? Oh, I'm going to have to play along, aren't I? Oh, shit. Alright, I'll do my best. It'll tell me how. Is it up? Okay. It's that song again. Let's let Hazel do it. was great. You're playing the r and &R song. We're both awesome. Yeah, and our song is uh, awesome. I can't read. I love to travel with you and remember your songs. It's a good thing that no Whopper Flower Shrub are very impressive. Also, no matter how dark the sky and land get, as long as your spirit emits warmth like a golden sun, there will always be hope. That was very interesting. As long as your heart emits gold and warm lights like the sun, there will always be hope. 
trying to get this one up here. Man, this quest, I've been doing this quest for a long time. This quest is really long, by the way. It's like several hours long. I'm talking like six, seven hours. That's why it's like, wow, it's really coming to an end. Because it's super, super long, this quest. Like, holy shit. All of this, this quest starts all because of a girl named Rana. Like, oh my god. She's the one that takes you to, like, the withering zone, and then she gets affected by it, and then we she gets sealed in a sphere, and we're trying to save her and get her out of it. The last uh, festival Usava took place during Navarina's time in many tales and recollections. Marana was everywhere back then, like the withering. Trees died and lush plains turned brown. It rained filthy red water, red, not the lovely apple red, very horrifying. I'm glad I don't remember it now. Many children returned to Serva before they were done growing into Varsara trees, but there was still Naravaruna and Vespa Yes, at this time, at that time rather, you must have been a young Adonara sapling like me. Right, I have lost a lot of memories, but still can recall Nara's tears. Salty drops fell from his eyes, but I wasn't afraid. He spoke to me at length about our adventures in the forest, and thus the tales were preserved. Then he left. I wonder where he is now. He was very much like you, Nara Sovereign. You too might be Nara, but you are shining like the warmth golden sun. Drifting seeds are destined to flourish on nice soil. Same for Nara. One day the wind in Nara's hearts will, will stop halting their steps. He's basically saying one day you'll die. But Nara Sovereign is not like ordinary Nara. Nara Sovereign will keep traveling and will perhaps run into Narvarina someday. Yeah, we already have run into our brother and he's an idiot. Yes, but you forgot, Arama, that Nara and are not Ara Nara. Their time is short. Narvarina couldn't live as long as trees nor share dreams and memories as we do. How lonely and lamentable the Nara are. Nara means human. Right, if only Nara Sovereign were an Ara Nara, if so we wouldn't know each other. We would have known each other from way before and shared so many memories. The forest will remember. I'll bring all of Varanara's, uh, Vanarana's, rather, memories to meet, um, in the Sarva, like rivers converging into the sea. Very long time, Varanara, Vanarana, rather, I keep saying Varanara because it was another name, was destroyed in the Nara catastrophe, the Conria thing. Since then, Aranara made dreams their home and distanced themselves from Nara humans. Only Nara Varana, or Varuna, has always been friends with Aranara and continued helping everybody after the destruction. Only then did Aranara trust Nara again little by little. When we parted, he told me that maybe one day another golden Nara would come to us and she would bring us even better memories. I think that with you and Nara Sovereign, perhaps it's time for us to walk, sing, and play with Nara in the forest once again. But everybody trusts Nara Sovereign and Paimon because they're genuinely good. It wouldn't be a problem if all Nara are as nice like her. You sound like an old Nara, are you? Oh, I'm very happy to have the festival and give the flowers to the Golden Nara, but I'm also reminded of a lot of other things. Arama Arja, what are you doing here? Don't tell Paimon you ran away because you didn't like how Sovereign played. No. Nara Sovereign's performance was a bright ray of sunshine. It felt very great. I don't say that to me. But the Bija is crucial to Arana's and Nara Sovereign's wish, so I had to get ready. Oh yeah, the Bija. I totally didn't forget about that. <laughs> right. I went looking for the Fane of Asvara right after the song ended. It sounded like it had something to do with the concourse we visited before. Paimon is as bright as moonlight. That's where... Ashavada's Tree of Dreams is. It's an ancient, sturdy Vasara tree that's able to produce the Bija. However, I don't remember the location, nor am I able to leave Vara uh, Vanarana's dream, so it's all up to Arama to find it. Nah, worry not. Like Nara Savan and Paimon would say, I got this. Raja, why? What do you mean you can't leave? I've been limited to moving only in Vanarana's dream since a long, long time ago. A tree of dreams is required to anchor a dream this big, and I became that tree so everyone would have a home. How can this be? 
What's the matter, Paimon? It's a good thing for me to house so many big dreams and be with everyone. Yeah, I want to be a great R&R &R like, like a Raja when I grow up. Hosting many dreams like a tree with many leaves. R&R &R have a different way of thinking. Ah, Paimon gets it. Well, that's a centric R&R &R we met before. Also said that Bija is yielded from the extraction of memories and dreams. Is that true? Can R&R &R lose their memory? That's probably the case. But I can no longer recall it now. So what should we do now? You got a lot of flowers during the festival, right? Not just during the festival, we got some from all the others, too. Paimon wishes they could remember all the adventures we had together. Yeah, cause I, I purged the giant tree seed thing that was in the ceiling and was like covered all red with the withering. And when I, when I purified it, all of the other Aranara that helped me get there, there was three of them, they all lost their memories. Um, it's like they didn't know who I was and they didn't remember the journey we went on to get there because it took forever to do that. Like I said, this quest is really long and it has like fucking seven or eight different parts to it. And that was one part. Don't worry, no memories will be lost. The forest will remember, just like the rivers emptying into the sea before being turned into the rain splashing down onto the earth. Give me all the flowers, okay? They are mementos of R&R's friendship and are precious to us. What do you need them for? I'm putting my flowers in theirs together. Since you put it that way, Arama, you hand Arama all of the flowers. Ara reaves a garland out of the flowers, including its own, and puts it on your head. This is kind of cute. The flowers actually move when she moves. You see them moving, it kind of looks weird, like you're in a dream. Oh, it's so pretty. It looks great on you. The Skyland represents the blessings that we are Nara, as well as all of Von Arana, want to bestow upon our favorite Nara, our favorite human. Nara means human. Unlike you, Nara, we, our Nara, can communicate in our dreams. Any sadness can be shared amongst, among, rather, all our Nara to soften its blow, and we share our joys as well. When Nara Sovereign wears the garland, we'll be able to share the load on your mind. That sounds wrong. And we can protect you when you have nightmares. Thanks, I guess. I'll accept it. Mm. I should be thanking you for accepting our flowers. That gives us a greater joy than soaking in the sun, drinking sweet water, and dreaming nice things. Paimon wants a garland, too. I doubt that's necessary. Why not? Now our sovereign will be facing many great dangers and experiencing great sadness. We can ward off some of her nightmares through the garland. On the other hand, Nara Sovereign will protect Paimon from nightmares. You will always be together and will share both joy and sorrow. That's right. We're the best of friends after all. So what should we do now? We're going to offer the Vasoma fruit at the Fane of Ashvada. Then we can produce the Bija with Aranar. Or Arana, rather, the other one. I have studied you, Nara, before. Unlike Aranar, you have to sleep when the moon is up. And you come out only after the sun has risen. Actually, it's opposite for me. I'm usually up all night. Would you like to sleep, Nara Sovereign? Now that you mention it, Paimon's pretty brushed from the fun today. You can rest in my house if you'd like. Fun Arana will guard your dreams. I'll take the offer. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling tired, I should have said. Alright. We'll go to her house. That's cute. I want to see something though for a minute. Can you actually put it on your character or is it just like something that I get to keep? It's probably just something that I get to keep. Yeah, it's just something I get to keep. A garland woven by Arama. Garlands of this kind represent the blessings from all of Von Arana. Yeah, it's just something you get to keep. Would have been cool if it was like a Tales game, and the Tales games, when you get shit like that, you can actually put it on the character and wear it around. <laughs> that's why I was like, can I actually wear it? Because I would probably wear it on them. Because that's what I liked about the Tales games, is you had accessories that you can put on all of the characters. It wasn't just locked to one character. In Tales of Zelia, I had put like elf ears on all of my characters, like Jude and Mila and Elise. And it was fun to run around with them like that. I think I even put them on all of them. I even put it on Alvin as well. And Rowan. And I think... What, the other, what was the other girl's name that was Jude's friend? 
she was like his childhood friend. I can't remember her name, but she's in my mind. Uh, the girl that she was, she was in love with Jude, and she was jealous of Mila. I can't remember her name all of a sudden. Shit. Because I haven't played that game in years. I was doing another playthrough on Tales of Zelia, but it's such a long game, I don't know if I can do it. I, I forget what her name was. Oh my god. I might have to look it up. I can't remember what her name was. Oh my god, hold on. Because she was a character I really liked. My friend, the good mage, wants to talk. Hold on, it's gonna bother me. What was her name? What's her name? Oh, what was her name? Leia. 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 Yeah, her name was Leia. Yeah, that's her. I really liked that character. A lot of people said she was annoying. Hold on a minute. Hmm. Doing detective work means you gotta walk the walk. No, I mean literally. I need to search high and low for evidence. My friend is spamming me with something. They must have not have seen the other videos I did, because YouTube hasn't been sending out notifications. And they were like, have you seen the leaks on Skara? And I was like, dude, I only posted two fucking videos showing how he plays. Of course I know. I do like that character. I'm not obsessed with him, but I do like Skaramish a lot. A lot of people like him a lot as too. It's just, it's kind of annoying, because every time I get on Pinterest, there's like this person that everybody's fed up with on there. There's somebody, I forgot their username because I blocked them because they were annoying me. Um, it's just this person that will spam on your comments where it's like, Oh, uh, our Lord Scarra, simp master or some shit. And that's all the guy does. He just posts a bunch of shit, all hail Scarra something something, and it's really annoying. And a lot of other people are getting fed up with the guy too. Because uh, everything that has to do with Scar, rather if it's like a video or a picture, the guy it's the same guy and he copy-pastes the same comment. Um, and everybody on Pinterest is fucking tired of him. Um, I like the character too. I mean, yeah, he is attractive, but I'm not going to go that far. If he's a virtual character, he doesn't exist. I mean, yeah, you can be attracted to the people, but that guy is taking it a little too far. Like I said, there's people that do make... I'm going to say it like this for a reason. There are people that make prawn of these characters. And I have seen it. Being a 29-year-old woman, I'm not oblivious to that shit. And I've seen it. I mean, I don't really care. I mean, people have their own things that they... They like. Everybody has their own kink. And everybody gets off on their own ways. I personally don't care. They're not affecting me. I could care less. Um... But I've seen, I've seen, like, prawn of all of these characters. But it, it, it's all up to how you see them, personally. There's prawn of everything, dude. Everything. Um, it's, it all depends on if you want it to affect you. You know, things only affect you if you want them to. Um, like, if you let it get to you. Like, uh, do you know, uh, my husband, Oshishu? His, his Japanese voice actor, um, Atsushi Kisaishi? He actually does Yaoi Henta. He voices Aoba Saragaki in Dramatical Murder. I've heard him moan like a storm. Straight up prawn star moaning. He's he's good at it. Um, but I can't unhear it. <laughs> I can't unhear it. Oh my god. But I don't let it affect me though, because I don't see Shu I don't see Shishu as some Yaoi hentai person, I see him as what I see him as. I don't see him like that, so... Even Neza, I uploaded a clip, I'm like, what Neza sounds like when you clap his cheeks. 
because his voice actor has done some questionable things. Um, everybody needs a job somehow. You know, if my favorite voice actors do prawn on their free time, I don't care. I really don't care. Like, the voice actors are real people just like me. And you gotta look at it that way. The voice actors behind these characters are human just like you. They have a life just like you. They have their likes, wants, and needs just like you. They are a real person just like you. And you gotta separate them from their character. And it, it that's what I've been doing. Um, once you start seeing the character as the voice, it really detaches you. That's what happened to me, because I actually follow Ether's voice actor, Zach Aguilar. I'm even subscribed to him on YouTube. Um, and because I keep watching his streams when he plays, um, like, Poppy Playtime, and he's a person just like me. Um, and when I started to realize that, and I started to see how he really is, it instantly detached me from Ether. When I see Ether now, I don't see Ether, I see Zack. And it kind of feels like it ruined it for me. Um, because now when he talks in game and when I see him, I don't see the character anymore. I only ever see the voice actor now. And that's why when it comes to the other characters, like um, this guy here, Kira Naragan, I don't want to know about him outside of the game. When it comes to any of the other voice actors, I've, e I've already seen what Kazuo's voice actor looks like too, and you know, Venti's voiced by a girl, ha Erica Harlicker. I've already, she also voices Bennett and Sing Cho, and she's a girl outside of this, just like me, because I'm a female too. So. I don't want to, like when I see Venti, I don't want to see her, you know what I mean? I want to see the character as a character. So that's why I'm trying not to do any more research on the characters, because it ruined it for me with Ether. because now when I see the character, I only ever see Zack now, because I know who the voice actor is. And it ruined it for me. It detached me from Ether permanently. And it kind of sucks, because I want to see him as the character, and I can't, and I don't. Kind of like how when I see Sasuke, all I think is fucking Yuri Lowenthal. See what I mean? When I see Itachi, all I see is Crispin Freeman. When I see um, any other characters like Ichigo or somebody, it's like Johnny Young Bosch. I don't see the character, I see the voice actor. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> or what's what's the other famous one? He also voices uh, Ryu Hayabusa and Iba Mitsunari and Senko Kabasura, the English one. Uh, what was his name again? Shit. Um... I just don't see them anymore. I see the voice actor. I can't, I can't remember what his name was. Didn't he also voice, um... He didn't voice Ieyasu. Because the same voice actor for Ieyasu, the Sengoku boss or the English one, he also voiced, um... Uh... Another character in Persona, uh, Akihiko oh. Sonata. Intuition tells me that something very um, interesting is about I'm to just forgetting what the guy's name is because I put myself on the spot and I can't remember right now. Um, e uh, God, what was his name? Uh, damn. Oh God, he's one of those top famous ones, just like Eerie and. Crispin Freeman, um... Oh god, I can't remember right now. So I'm focused on this. Oh god, I'll have to look it up, because I put myself on the spot, and I can't remember what the fuck his name was. He's a main guy. It's just, I'm having memory issues. It's, it's the... I have a, a memory break and my long-term and short-term memory, where I will literally forget things. Liam O'Brien, there you go. Fuck me. <laughs> Liam O'Brien is somebody I should know. Jesus Christ, he voices every other character that I like. Akihiko Sonata from Persona 3, 4. He also voiced fucking Ryu Hayabusa in Dead or Alive. And he also voiced um, a couple other characters, Ieyasu, Tokugawa, and Senko Kabasa 3 Samurai Heroes. Um... He, Liam O'Brien voices like literally everybody. <laughs> Actually, I've been wanting to ask something. Why do you sleep? Because it brings us comfort? I don't know. I think sleeping is a waste of time. Because uh, you need to. Your body can't operate when you're really tired. When you're super tired, when I'm really tired, I have a hard time functioning. 
I can't talk right, I can't move right, I get really like lightheaded, I can't stand right without my weight shifting.